next recording i will be showing you how to install postgres sql database using mrdnf repository this is one of the easiest ways to set up postgres sql database in the successive sessions we will be talking about how to set up postgres sql using rpm or probably from source or procuring an postgres sql rds uh, flavor so before i proceed on this let me walk you through the steps we will do first we'll log into the ec2 instance then we will check if these two are available ideally they won't be available then i will install postgres once i install the postgres you can see postgres user and psql binary then we will switch to postgres and we are going to log into database environment using psql command so let me log into my console aws management console i'm logging in to get my public ip See, it already picked up my email ID. If I go to EC2, I have one running instance here. I have one terminated one. So if I click on the running one, I would see the IP address here, public IP. Okay, this is exactly the same IP. This is in fact the same EC2 instance I've created in my previous recording. Now what we are going to do is we are going to log into uh, Putty by giving this uh, IP address and making sure SSH authentication has my private key. Now if you look at we logged in as ec2 iphone user using private key now let me check that that actually concludes uh, step number one now let's move on to the step number two check postgres user and psql executable to do that let me switch to root user If I say cat etc password this file holds all the user accounts in a linux or unix environment so there is no postgres here if you see there is no postgres user similarly which psql the command is not found right this is complete this is expected because the setup is not done yet now the next thing we need to do is we need to do a postgres installation through these repositories as a root user let me go to this link so this details the steps that needs to be done for m repository so I'm selecting the latest Postgres version. The platform is RHL8 because if I say here cat etc red hat iPhone release, I have red hat 8. So it's x86 architecture. So all I need to do is install the repository RPM using this DNF command. This command is successful. Now so let me install the client packages. I don't know for some reason this client um, 
packages installation is failing i think uh, there is some issue with the instructions they have given here some issue with the packages see it says that unable to find a match if you google it too you will find some notable number of references for this i think it's kind of a bug or so so i don't want to stop here even though this is a bug so what we will do is uh, we'll go to the next section here it talks about every linux distribution includes a postgres sql version for example if you install rhl8 by default there are 10 and 9.6 modules are there right let's go ahead and install with the postgres which is already included in my rhl distribution here is a command so in older versions of linux you used to use m now rhl8 introduced dnf so let me run this command So here it is successful it's complete so let me see what next steps i have to do here post installation for rhl 7 or 8 here yeah let me run these commands okay there are no errors i'm enabling the service database service and i'm starting the service that's it that's all i have to do off by following these steps here right this we will see it in the next session how to install uh, using an interactive installer now if you go to etc if you cat the etc password you would see a user id called postgres Similarly, if you say which PSQL, you would see PSQL installed under user bin. That actually concludes this step number three as well. Very easy, very easy setup for Postgres. We would be doing next thing as switching to the Postgres user. Since I am in a root, I can simply say switch user hyphen source any environment and the user ID Postgres. So I moved on to the Postgres user ID. I simply say PSQL and enter. See, PSQL is a utility that helps me to interact with databases. Right? If I will see in detail about this in the in the next uh, sessions. But for now, when I press backslash L, this is, these are the beautiful backslash commands. Uh, it, it actually lists the databases available. Backslash Q is to quit and come back to command prompt. That's actually my step number four. And step number five. Since the objective of this recording is to majorly focus on Postgres installation, I would stop here for now. But my successive recordings would cover in detail what are these default databases, where these default databases get stored, how do you create a new database, pretty much the basic administration uh, L1, L2, and L3 tasks in a successive recordings. For now, if I quickly recap what we have done, We logged into our EC2 instance. Then we switched to the root. And before Postgres installation, we made sure that a Postgres user does not exist and PSQL executable does not exist. And we installed Postgres through M repository, but we faced some issues. Hopefully uh, they, they fix it down the line. Uh, instead of installing 11, what we installed is whatever the default comes up with. Uh, RHLA distribution installed. Then we checked that these 
to exist after this setup postgres and psql now we switch to the postgres user and we connected to psql prompt and we are able to list the databases that's all for this video thank you again for watching looking forward to talk to you in the next one